when people talk about sports in the Philippines, um, a familiar refrain follows. Um, sinasabi natin, government doesn't spend enough money on sports. And uh, even Philippine Olympic Committee President Pepin Kowanko would tell you that it's the reason why we didn't win a single medal in the London Olympics. It's the reason why we haven't won a medal in the Olympics since 1996. Government doesn't spend any money on sports. Um, it's a fair assessment. Um, government budgets around 800 million pesos a year for sports. Uh, around 200 million of that comes from national government and another 600 million of that comes from other sources like PAGCOR. So to put that into perspective, 800 million, Manny Pacquiao earns 800 million pesos for one single fight. And that's how much our government budgets for sports. So pag kinumpare mo, maliit talaga yung budget natin. And our government would tell you that Uh, they would admit that uh, even compared to our neighbors like Malaysia or Indonesia, we spend a minuscule amount on sports. Um, in a more perfect world, our athletes won't have anything to worry about except to train. But the problem is we don't live in a perfect world. I I'm a sports guy. I, I run a sports website. But even I wouldn't blame government for putting sports low on our priorities. We have buildings to build, we have mouths to feed, we have roads to pave. And so it's perfectly understandable for government not to spend more money on sports. Ngayon, uh, kawawa naman tayo. Wala pa lang pera yung gobyerno natin para sa sports. Uwi na lang tayo. Uh, back, uh, pero the reason why I'm here, the reason why I'm giving this talk is I believe The future of Philippine sports lies beyond Philippine government. In fact, uh, the most successful sport in the Philippines has thrived for the longest time even without government support. Uh, that sport is basketball. Siguro some of you are, are saying, Teka, um, bakit basketball? Di ba puro pandak tayo? Bakit yun yung favorite natin sport. But you have to understand that because of our culture, it's sort of like telling people not to be into professional wrestling because it's fake. It doesn't matter. And hindi na hindi na issue yung height dun sa pagmamahal natin sa basketball. I'd also have I, I also have a bone to pick with the argument na hindi tayo successful sa basketball. In fact, it's our most successful sport in the Southeast Asian Games. It's the one sport in the Southeast Asian Games where our players could show up and we'd win gold medals. Yung mga player natin sa SEA Games, kikindatan lang natin yung kalaban natin, panalo na tayo. It's not the case in football where our team placed last in the SEA Games last year. It's not the case in even boxing. Uh, our best champion boxers lost to their counterparts from Thailand. Even billiards with all our great players, it was actually an Indonesian player who won gold medal in the billiard competition uh, last year. Even baseball, uh, we won gold medal in baseball, but we had a tough test. Compare that with basketball where we beat opponents by 40.8 points per game. So, kinindatan lang talaga natin yung mga kalaban, nanalo na tayo. But, Beyond medals, basketball is our most successful sport because it's the one sport where uh, it works. We could see how good we are at basketball by how we develop our athletes, uh, by how we treat our athletes. The, be the very best basketball players are identified at a young age and uh, they're given scholarships, people care about their nutrition. People bend over backwards so that they're able to balance their academics with their training. And the government doesn't have to spend a single dime for that. Now, it's fair to say that we focus too much on basketball. To a certain extent, I agree. Um, right now, if there's an athletically gifted kid in the provinces, um, more often than not, he'd go into basketball just because there are more opportunities in that sport. Um, but We shouldn't blame basketball for taking a bigger slice of the pie because 
The problem is there isn't much of a pie to begin with. Um, a couple of years ago, the Ascals made the Cinderella run to the Suzuki Cup. Um, it's the top competition in Southeast Asia. And apart from the fact na pogi sila, um, they, they, it, it was a historic victory. So people were falling all over themselves to be close to them. And suddenly, sponsors were um, giving them money because they still had to make a trip to Indonesia to compete in the semifinals. So they needed money. And when they went home, a lot of people wanted to help out, and one of them was Manny Pangilinan. Um, he pledged 1 million pesos for the Ascals for, for their trip to Indonesia. Now, sabi ng mga tao, wow, galante na ni MVP, 1 million pesos, parang barya lang. But when you come to think of it, that year, the PLDT Wireless Group spent 4 billion pesos on marketing and promotions alone. And more likely, yung 1 million pesos that, that went to the Ascals, that came out of that budget. And chances are, if you're working for PLDT, it was a matter of uh, realigning funds so that you'd have some money to give to the Ascals. Siguro, um, sinabi, sinabi ng mga tao sa PLDT na baba muna natin yung, um, yung billboard ni Marian Rivera o billboard ni Robin Padilla. Para may pang tayo sa Ascals. Now, I, I probably shouldn't have made uh, Manny Pangilinan my example because the sports site that I, I work for is owned by him and I might get fired. Um, sa lunes, dear Mr. Tordesilla. Um, anyway, but, but beyond that, um, he's, he's not uh, the best example here because he's actually one of the few businessmen we have who spends his advertising money on sports. So a big part of that 4 billion pesos that PLDT spends go to sports. Philippine companies, uh, sabi ng Nielsen, uh, spend about $4 billion a year on advertising. That's 160 billion pesos. But only about 5% of the top 1,000 companies spend it on sports sponsorships. 5%. Companies would rather spend their money on telenovelas and variety shows and whatever else rather than spend them on our athletes with a notable exception of basketball and more recently, Manny Pacquiao and the Ascals. Basically, what these companies are saying is that other sports aren't worth supporting because they're not popular enough. But in fact, over the years, we've had produced so many superstars in different sports. Stars like Onyok Velasco. Um, he, um, for those too young to remember, he was the last Olympic medalist for the Philippines. He won in 1996. And he became so popular, in fact, that he starred in a movie about his own life. Um, even before Manny Pacquiao, We've had very popular professional boxers. This was uh, Rolando Navarrete. Uh, he won the world championship in 1981. He became so popular that he starred in a movie about his own life. Um, sabi niyo, baka sabi niyo, puro boxing. Lydia De Vega, um, the golden girl of Philippine athletics, broke all kinds of records in the 80s, fastest woman in Asia, became so popular. You wouldn't believe it, she starred in a movie about her own life. Um, chess, even chess. May, may superstar tayo sa chess. Eugene Torre at age 22 became the first grandmaster in Asia, in all of Asia. He became so popular, you wouldn't. In fairness to him, the movie wasn't his own life. Kalav team niya dyan si Vilma Santos. Okay. So what these athletes have in common, apart from bad acting, um, is that they're champions. We're not afraid to glorify our champions. We're not afraid to show love for champions. So much so that people actually think we'd see bad movies about our champions. But it also underscores our biggest problems when, we come, when it comes to sports. We don't love our athletes until they become champions. 
Uh, so our, when our athletes stop being champions, our love dies along with them. The only sport where we give our love unconditionally, win or lose, is basketball. Basketball is the only sport where winning isn't a prerequisite for our affection. And uh, people from UP don't, would know that because... Um, <laughs> Mahal, mahal pa rin natin yung fighting maroons kahit hindi tayo nananalo. Okay. But, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, kaya sumikat yung basketball, the reason why it grew popular in the first place um, is because we started winning. We were champions in Asia, we were fixtures in the Olympics, yung mga panahon nila kaloy saga. And even in the PBA, the, the most popular teams during the early years was Crispa and Toyota. And the reason why they got all the fans was because they won all the championships. But things changed along the way. And today, that's not the case anymore. And people would say that it's a long process, but there are stories um, about people like Robert Jaworski who helped change that culture. Now, in 1985, Jaworski was playing for Hinebra and the team was playing against um, the national team. See, back then, bawal pa yung dream team, yung mga professionals na lalaban sa international. So what happened was, um, there was a separate national team apart from the players in the PBA. And that national team was managed by Danding Kowanko, who was very, very close to Mr. Marcos. And so he, he pulled out all the stops for that national team. So he recruited the best college players, p players like Hector Calma and Alan Kaidik and uh, Samboy Lim. And hindi pa siya contento ron. He recruited Americans to play for the national team. He, he naturalized players like uh, Dennis Steele and Jeff Moore to play for the Philippine team. And his most important move was to hire an American coach, a great NCAA coach in the U.S. named Ron Jacobs to run the program. And so, to, to get the best training for the national team, uh, Koanko asked the national team to play in the PBA, to play against players like Robert Jaworski and Francis Arnais to get their seasoning there. And so, Given all these resources at, at the disposal of this national team, they were favorites when they started playing in the PBA. And in one game in 1985, Northern consolidated against Ginebra. Big, big favorites yung national team. Playing coach si Robert Jaworski nun. Tapos nag-start yung game. Usually, Jaworski comes into the game in the second quarter. Game started, NCC took a big lead. And then even when Jaworski came in, hindi nila mahabol kasi galing talaga nung, nung national team. Then in the second quarter, Jaworski ate an elbow from one of the naturalized players and his mouth was busted open as it to go. And Ultra, there were 10,000 people at Ultra, fell silent because they couldn't believe one of the top basketball players was being manhandled like that by one of the American players. And so Jaworski was rushed out of the court. And he was brought to Medical City to get treatment for his busted up lip. And what happened was NCC fell behind. Uh, NCC took a lead of 15 points until the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, fans were down because they were cheering for Hinebra. They were cheering for the underdog. And Jaworski came back into the game in his jacket, took off his jacket, and his mouth was all stitched up. And he came into the game with eight minutes left, and Hinebra was down 15 points. And he led Hinebra to a, a comeback victory over the national team. And people say, even though he scored only three points that night, he was the reason why the team won. And people would say that night was the night that never say die was born. Today, it's, 
it's uh, common knowledge na pag sinabing Jaworski, pag sinabing Hinebra, never say die. Now, the funny thing about that story is that Hinebra didn't end up winning the championship that conference. Um, what happened was, uh, it was NCC who, who ended up winning the title. But Jaworski proved that you don't have to win trophies to be a champion. And if we learn something from this talk so far, it's that Filipinos love our champion. Now, the difference between basketball and all our other sports is that we tell stories in basketball that we don't tell for other sports. We help people become champions even though they, they don't have trophies. And I think um, we can change that. Uh, I work in media, and part of the reason what, what we're trying to do is to tell stories so that we have champions even though they, they don't have trophies yet. But it's not just up to me. It's also up to you. With social media and the power of the internet, you can also help tell stories. And there are so many interesting stories out there that we have the opportunity to tell. Stories like that of Juneza May Sustutuedo. She's a 13-year-old she's a girl from Iloilo. She broke middle distance running records in Palarong Pambansa. And what's so remarkable about her is that um, she doesn't wear shoes when she runs. Uh, she's been breaking all these records running barefoot. But her father is worried about her. Uh, he thinks that she's going to end up getting injured if she keeps uh, running barefoot. So in her last race in Cebu, she wore shoes. And she said it was so uncomfortable, it caused her to finish second for once. Now, I don't know about you, but hearing that story, aren't you at least curious about what happens next? Don't you want to check up on what happens to Juneza, not even as a fan, but just, just you know, just to uh, tell the story, um, just to complete the story, because all we want is to be told a good story. And then there are stories like that of Coach Rudy Del Rosario. Um, he looks like a reggae frontman, but he used to be a star for the Philippine national football team. Um, he led, actually, the UP Maroons to a title back in the 80s, and he was a member of the Ascals before they were the Ascals. These days, he runs the Jeepney Football Club. Uh, it's a football club for homeless children and street children, and they go around Metro Manila teaching football to people. They're also the team that is in charge of... Um, organizing the team to the Homeless World Cup. And the Homeless World Cup is a, an organization that aims to change lives of homeless people through football. So he's been doing that. And a couple of months ago, we got a call from Coach Rudy saying that there was a problem with the, the foundation that runs Jitney Football Club. And it turned out that there was, there was a chance that their stint to the Homeless World Cup this year is in peril. So they were lacking funds. So what we did at media is that we wrote about him. We retold his story. And his story resonated. It got a lot of Twitter shares. It got a lot of Facebook shares. To the point that sponsors actually started contacting him and telling him, uh, asking him how they can help. So this is just one example of how stories can help out sports. Because the way I see it, it's either this, we tell stories compelling enough for people to get to, to, to grab their attention, or we keep whining about government not spending enough money on sports. So there are so many interesting sports stories out there, uh, just waiting to be told, and I hope you help us spread the word. Thank you.